Hello again, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit educational Break the Cycle website. Among many things the website proposes is that many people, if not most, inherit up to six specific psychological wounds from childhood trauma. One of the most toxic, most widespread wounds is excessive shame. How would you define shame to a nine-year-old or a thirteen-year-old? Shame can be said to be the feeling of I'm worthless, I'm disgusting, I'm stupid, I'm no good, I'm inept, no one would like me, no one would love me. I'm shamed, I'm ashamed. Many of the clients I've worked with in my 31 years as a family therapist have exhibited signs of this wound. Some have been aware of it, some have not. The signs are obvious once you know what to look for. People who have difficulty with eye contact, people who apologize all the time, people who sprinkle I can't or I failed or I couldn't uh, in their language, describing themselves and their actions. People who emphasize and repeat talking about their failures, according to somebody. Excessive shame is epidemic in our country and perhaps in your family and maybe inside your skin. It's useful for everybody, especially parents, to become more familiar with what is self-respect what is self-love? Where do these come from? And if you didn't get them well enough in your childhood, as an adult, what can you do to improve them and increase them in your life and those of your children, if you have any? Self-respect can be said to be approval of your own values, your behaviors, what you stand for, your goals. It is saying, I like who I am. <coughs> this is different than egotism. Egotism says, not only do I like who I am, and I'm better than you. That's not what self-respect is. Another useful thing to think about when you're talking about self-respect is humility. What is humility? I would say that it's the quality of saying, I have many talents, so do you. I am not here to say that my talents are better than yours. Being humble can be self-effacing, meaning you can downplay the good things and good qualities about your character and about you as a person. That's not what self-respect is about. Self-respect is about factually acknowledging and appreciating the talents you have, the qualities and the values you hold that make you a worthwhile, lovable human being. Where does self-respect come from? Notice your instinctive answer to that important question. I propose, after many years of reflection on this subject and struggling with my own low self-esteem, self-esteem starts in early childhood, even before we have language. Infants, pre-verbal infants, are entirely dependent on the giant gods that take care of us, uh, the gods that feed us, that put clothes on us, that dry us, that bathe us, that change our diapers, that put us in soft places, that may touch us lovingly or harshly or not at all. The behavior of these giant beings in our first months of life can evoke in us feelings of pleasure, among which are good me. We can't put that into words, but it's a feeling. If our parent smiles at us, touches us in a loving way, gives us soothing sounds, 
we instinctively begin to form feelings of good me long before we can differentiate well, what is it about me that's good or bad? The flip side of that is if parents look angry, if they scowl, if they use harsh language, if they yell, if they scream, if they hit us, if they hurt us, if they laugh at us, all the visual signals we pick up before we have words to go with them evoke a feeling of bad me. Ugh. Ugh. We can't say why, we can't articulate what's wrong, but it's clear that we do not please these beings on whom we rely. That is the roots of self-esteem or excessive shame. Now, move through the next 15 to 20 years of an infant's developing life. If the overall impact of the key adults in a child's life give continual, genuine messages of approval, affection, enjoyment, love, appreciation, respectful guidance, often the feelings of good me evolve into I'm a good person, I'm lovable, I'm okay, I like myself. They like me. The roots of self-esteem and self-respect come from our earliest years and evolve throughout our childhood. Part of the challenge of maturing is to go from depending on other people to decide whether we are lovable, worthy of self-esteem. Uh, we depend on other people's reaction to us, whether they, quote, like us, seek us out, accept us, enjoy us, want to be with us, laugh with us, laugh at us appreciatively. We go from depending on other people to, if we're lucky, we mature and we become um, judgmental of ourselves rather than depending on other people. We osmose into saying, am I a good person by my own standards? I'm here to please myself. I don't have to depend on other people for my self-worth. That's a long, difficult journey, especially if we're not introspective, if we're not encouraged to pay attention. What's going on inside of me? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? Am I growing? How am I growing? Many people are so distracted, externally and internally, they're not aware of what's going on. They're often not aware articulately and intellectually. How do I feel about myself? Where did I get that? Is it an accurate feeling? If I don't like how I feel about myself, what can I do about it? So a challenge that you and I and everybody you care about and your parents and your children have all gone through or are going through is mig migrating from depending on external information about am I a good person? Am I worthwhile? Should, am I worthy of respect? To internal judgment. Am I a good person? Am I worthy of self-respect? How are you doing on that journey? Did your parents encourage you to take that journey? Did they take it themselves? Are you helping your own children take that journey to deciding internally, am I worthy of self-respect? By the way, notice the difference between self-respect, I admire and appreciate my qualities and abilities, without false humility, without egotism. I admire those things about myself and I'm grateful for them. That's different than self-confidence. Self-confidence is, I know I can do so-and-so. That relates to self-esteem and it is different. Self-esteem has to do with pride. I like who I am, 
I appreciate what I'm capable of and how I act and what I stand for. I'm proud of myself. That does not mean I am better than anybody else. It means I'm working towards being the best I can be. Self-respect can be compartmentalized into different types. The broadest type of self-respect is of myself as a person. I respect myself as a human being. There's an adjacent self-respect for us as a male or a female, man or woman, boy, girl. There are many other smaller self-respects. I respect myself as a citizen, as a, an employee, as a brother, as a grandchild, as a niece, as a soldier or sailor or nurse or doctor or social worker. Or, in many ways, many components to self-respect, each of which can be developed independently. Okay? An open question for those of us who were raised in traumatic childhoods and who were deprived of self-respect. An open question is, if I am low in self-respect and low self-esteem, can I improve it? In my opinion, after being in the trench with this question myself personally and compassionately watching the journey of many, many other clients struggle with their answer to the question, my belief is absolutely there are specific things anyone with low self-esteem can do to improve it. I want to offer you those specific ideas in part two of this video series. I hope you'll watch it. Thanks for your time.